Game resumed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our new season. This or oh, next series. This is Northern Arizona University going up against the University of Maryland. Uh, what is it? College Park. Yes. So spawning down in the bottom left as our orange Zerg player. We've all played him on ladder at least once. It is Barcode. His <laughs> opponent going to be the Red Terran over on the top or oh, bottom right. It is going to be Aiden. I want to say Aladdin, but it's Aiden. I think. And I'm joined by the wonderful Cheesehead Logic over here on Pleasure New Coast City. Pleasure to be here, Shiro. It is absolutely a pleasure. Sorry, <laughs> that sounded so terrible. Um, no, it's, good, it's great to be back with the CSL again for another wonderful season. We had such a great time last season. And again, bigger and better things coming up every single time. Again, we have a little bit more of a shorter timetable this time. We've got four qualifier tournaments. If you guys aren't aware, you guys can, of course, go to the Sea Star League website. Basically, every other, every other week, we're going to have a qualifier tournament. There's four total. You guys, if you didn't make it through this qualifier or haven't participated in one already, you guys can sign up for the second, the third, or the fourth one as well. Um, I think Berkeley is what one away, and I can't remember who who are the winners from yesterday. I need to make sure. I need to double check that. Like Ber Berkeley's going to face off against the winners of this series now. Who, I can't remember who the winners of yesterday was. I think it was Davis and Ohio State. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. <laughs> so we're, we're setting up the round of four. Sorry, I just had like a little bit of a mental lapse. I couldn't remember. Like I had before the cast, I had it ready in my head, but now I'm just like I completely forgot it. Ah. Oh, oh voices in your head tend to do that. Looks like we are seeing that first drone trying to snipe the SCV, but not going to have any such luck. Yeah. I've seen Barcode a few times, actually. I think he's like, <laughs> what, first, second, and about fifth on um, GM in Korea. I know, right? Not too bad of a deal. He's, he's doing well. this CSL. You know, He's everywhere, man. Well, I actually did do a little bit of research on the barcode. As tricky as he wants to be, his actual name is John, if you guys want to find him. I don't know if it's John Doe, John, 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 John Doe, John Q. You know, I'm not sure exactly who it's going to be, but his name is John. So we could call him that if you want. Um, his opponent, of course, is Aiden under the UMCP tag, which is Maryland College Park. If you guys have not like ever known who Maryland College Park is, they're basically typically known as University of Maryland, the Terps, uh, the Turtle School. So if you haven't seen their mascot, it's actually really awesome. It's like this big, aggressive turtle. It's awesome. All, all these all these American schools with their cool like logos and everything like that. It's awesome. I would make a joke, but I'm pretty sure it's not politically correct. Anyway. We are seeing that bunker go down <laughs> very early. We have got the Reaper coming across the field. So you should be able to hit there in time at the moment. We've got a bunch of drones. Don't think they're necessarily... Yes, they are actually going to be trying to pull over to the bunker. I don't know if they're actually going to be able to hit the SCV. He should be able to dart around. And, and, oh, it finishes! They have got the surround. Will the Reaper be able to get inside? It's not really going to matter because it's completely surrounded and it's caught fire. Salvage isn't able to go through as unfortunately it burns to the ground too quickly. Yeah, 150 minerals really early on, that's pretty painful. Yeah, that was actually a really, really good hold. Typically we don't see out of that out of Zergs. Usually they kind of just kind of bite their time and just let the bunker finish up, get their minerals. But this time not even letting any sort of damage happen to himself. Making sure the bunker finishes up before he has even the opportunity to get the Reaper on in there. But now two Reapers are out for Aiden. I'm not sure what he's going to be able to do there. He's going to probably attempt to at least hop in between both sides of the bases. But the barcode player, Mr. John himself, catching everything right at the top. Beautiful control, man. This is actually probably one of the best Reaper holds I've seen in a while out of uh, Zerg. Well, what do you expect from someone who's in GM on Creel? I mean, that's pretty much it. <laughs> what would you expect from the GM the server of Korea? I, I, I know, I know. Every uh, we're we're gonna so we're gonna like start a poll. Just like, who do you think this barcode is? Do you think it's Nest Do you think it's MVP? It's do you a think flash. it's a flash? Is it flash? It can't be flash. Well, it could be flash. Technically, it was it funny during MLG. During MLG, Day Nine actually had a, like a little bit of a hiccup. He he mentioned like a statistics where KT Flash was like the top uh, GM Terran in, or just the top GM in Hot Beta. But that, that's actually a Smurf account for Marine King. So I kind of found that funny. So we know we, so we know who Marine. <laughs> We know who Marine King is. Yeah, no, it was funny. Everybody, like, for a while thought Flash was, like, the top GM, and everybody's just like, oh, my God, God is ready for HOTS. The playing field has evened out in this oh. time. But it's, like, it was actually Marine King. That's kind of interesting, because uh, he used to be known as Fake Boxer. Boxer before. Yeah, so. He's a troll, man. He's a troll. That's kind of cool. 
Now, uh, as we watch and see, we got early Widomines coming out from Aiden, and this is what we're talking about again. Like I was wondering, you got now you have the option. Do you want to go Widomines? Do you want to go for Hellions? And when typically you go Widomines this early, you're looking to play a little bit more defensive. And I really like this because again, what he's going to be able to do, he puts a little bit of pressure on the Zerg, at least not to attack. He's going to have to make himself aware because Widomines again can just explode a whole entire army. He's looking to set this, and I really like this as well, setting it right at the Zelnaga Tower, right over here, or not? I guess he's just walking on by <laughs> over to the third location or the far third location it's gonna try yeah. to prevent that base from popping up and that's smart again i typically use the widow mines right now against protoss to prevent them from taking a third base as quick as they possibly can just cool again he's using that third cc he doesn't necessarily want to float over just yet basically utilizing it to continue that scv production and maintain it at a really high rate which is kind of nice to see but we have obviously got barcode with a much faster third hatch than we've seen typically in the previous games so that should pan out quite well for him Previously, we've been talking about how it's a little bit of a risk allowing yourself to be behind an economy up against the Terran and allowing your Terran to really escalate with the same number of bases as you, not to mention the fact that they have the advantage. Ooh, will it burrow? It burrows. It well, barely in time, and pop! Beautiful control right there by John. Able to move three of his lings out of the way, make sure he doesn't lose his, all of them. And the only problem right hey, now, he needs some sort of though. detection. He needs some detection. No, he needs some detection. Where's the overseer there? What goes is trying to form, but I think potentially the Widow Mind recharge might finish up prior to the overseer finishing up, and one more unit will get popped. Wanted to see if John might move out of the way just for the time being. And no, the overseer beats it to the punch. Good stuff, man. This is awesome. This is actually turning out to be a really fun TVZ. Uh, see, he's actually switched over now. The reactor has gone up, putting a tech lab there. Currently just getting a bunch of barracks, so probably going to go for some Marine Hellion Hellbat kind of play that we've been seeing in the previous games. If he goes for medevac drops, probably won't be seeing them at least for another 2-3 minutes because he hasn't yet got a starport on the way. Yeah, again, it just kind of preference up to the player. Again, like I said, with the Widow Mines, you're basically defining yourself as a defensive posture. You're not going to be very aggressive. You want to get your macro game up. You want to get all your units up. You're just also making sure that you don't get attacked by anything too early. You're able to defend any type of aggression. And again, we're, like we said earlier, uh, a lot of Zergs, they like going early pressure right now. A lot of road, of early Ling Bane. And when you got Widow Mines on the field, that's a huge threat to those type of armies, if not controlled properly. So... I just all preference to each, each and every player. Barcode is actually going for the Spire, which I don't know, I, I feel as though since we saw in the previous game with the Roach attack being as heavy and successful as it was, I'm kind of surprised he's continuing to go, well, he's basically going with a different strategy. But I don't necessarily know how well it's going to stack up because it's such a narrow choke in here to get inside the Terran base is quite difficult. Usually there's vision throughout for the Terran at least. And when you know Widow Mines are around the mineral lines, it makes it very risky to have muters fly, floating over. Yeah, indeed. And I don't know if he knows if there is a Spire. Actually, let's double check his vision at the moment. And no, he actually doesn't know about the Spire. But just in case, Adian is getting some turrets up uh, to defend against those. But overall, you got to really like the production from both of the players right now at the moment. Th two additional barracks getting their reactors on. So he's going to be able to produce at least nine Marines at a time. Actually, no. Uh, one. Oh, no, he's getting a Tech Lab and a reactor. So what is that? Two, four, six... Eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten marines. I gotta do. I gotta do a little bit of math, man. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have calc today, so I gotta do a little bit of my math. Roaches now being used just to clear up that fourth base position. Get a nice preemptive attack. All oh, nice preemptive preparation. He already has a fourth gone down. Fifth will be ready when he does choose to go for it. He has to be careful. I mean, this is the fifth place that I feel that Zergs don't necessarily like to take as much, just because of the potential for a drop here and then a drop into your main is so high. And so frustrating to deal with, but with Muse, you should be able to comfortably handle it. Well, this is in general with like some of the new maps, some of the designs are kind of a little bit frustrating to Zerg players again with a lot of open airspace with uh, like New York. Um, well, what's the other map? I'm thinking Star, Star Station. What's the third new one I keep thinking of? Shiro, help me out. Shiro, help me out. Oh, oh, right. oh, which one? Not Akalon Waste, I'm trying to think, what was the other one? There's a there's a third one I vetoed, and I can't remember what the heck the name of it is at this point. Not Neo Planet S, there's a, the third new ladder map. The first, when we see the Widow Mine gets used up. Nice pre-scouting with that one Zergling. Didn't want a lot of them to be taken out, now probably going to run through just again with these things to figure out where exactly these Widow Mines are and detonate them. Coral, there we go, isn't it Coral? I the other new map? 
No, uh, that's now thrown up after burners being burnt. I'm not too sure why he chose to burn after burners just then, but okay. As he starting to get his marines. He doesn't have any medevac cover, which may be a little bit detrimental. Siege tanks on the high ground, obviously a really nice position, but at the same time, the risk of doing splash damage to their own marine brothers is a little bit high. Yeah, indeed. Now, what's going to be nice for our Terran player, Ian, he is getting the burrow, the burrow clause for the Widow Mine, so they're going to be able to burrow a lot quicker, especially once he starts getting more of them involved inside the composition. T2 is about to finish up as well as one armor, for, I mean one attack for a siege mode, and as we see, the drop got cleaned up pretty quick, not any damage of any sort getting done, unfortunately, for our Terran player. Overall, he does have a fairly good composition in the supply lead, 166 to 193. He's basically just trying to get as many units as he possibly can get out and he's got a really nice composition he's got three siege tanks he's got some widow mines involved and look at this see this is the difference Terran players right now adding even a late reactor and I think those are going to be for widow mines as well so I really like this coming out of Aiden you know what I really feel like right now in this game a Terran winning a push maybe no a nuke a nuke I haven't seen a nuke in so long and it's well, kind of like Terran's got Widow Mines, like, yeah, we don't really need nukes anymore. Well, it's not, like, really that prevalent anymore, especially when you've got, like, mines, when you've got Hellbats. Basically, it's almost like a miss... miss uh, it's sort of a misinvestment, sort of in, I want to say, TVZ, going Ghosts in general is a little bit more of a misinvestment. The only thing you seriously need the EMP for is maybe Vipers, maybe Infestors, yes. but the Infestors are a lot weaker than they used to be, so they're not really even worth uh, kind of worrying yeah. too much about... Just, yeah, it, it's part of the meta where you, you're going to see ghosts are not going to be really utilized. Ever since they got their snipe taken down, they're, they don't really have too, too much use or utilization. Yeah, hopefully they don't get removed in void. But as we say, that a little bit of a poke back and forth. Barco trying to get a nice surround from both sides. Now going to heavily commit to that siege tank line. Should be able to take out the majority of it with the Ling failings and Roach reinforcements. Widow Mines have been cleared up as the Zerg basically blanketing Aiden, the Terran counterpart. Look at the Terran man bringing in some Terran additional reinforcements as well. Yep, and he's going to push right on four. The overseers are completely out and open, and you know if he loses those overseers, that's big because not only is he losing supply, but he's also losing his ab ability for detection against those mines. And I think right now at the moment, Aiden is just wanting to focus down this third as quick as he possibly can, knocks it over, and we'll just probably back up, regroup, get more units out. And I, I'm worried right now for John, man. I don't know what he's going to be able to really do as the drop coming into the main as well. He's down a 129 supply to the 166. And Terran player now focusing down that far fifth hatch, man. He's just way too spread out at the moment. Uh, no, I'm thinking it's John the translator. John? Yeah. Just... Oh, John. <laughs> but yeah, that being said, he obviously has a drop inside the main as well with two Marauders and Medivac trying to take his down. Queens backing out, obviously a good idea as he waits the 3-3 to now finally finish up. A little bit surprised he went for that engagement without the 3-3 that was pretty much 20 seconds away. Indeed. A lot of lings out on the field, but this is kind of a last ditch push for Barcode. He doesn't really have any bases currently mining besides the... Oh, he's still got some minerals that he's made. Main, natural, and the fourth. Third being taken, obviously. Fifth now about to be spoke out. Well, the problem with that, this isn't Wings of Liberty. Mass Link could actually potentially work at some, some stages of the game, but with mm -hmm. Widow Mines out on the field right now with the high upgrades that, the 3-3 three, three upgrades that right now Adrian has, oh, he's got to be careful. My goodness, you cannot fly Mutas in that freely in there. But overall, it's just going to be very, very tough to deal with this type of army. You can't exactly just flank Swarm peacefully. And I really like this. This is cute. Flew in one Muta, pulled out a Widow Mine out of there, and continued harass from the drop as well. Coming over here at the fourth base. Oh, and exactly. some of the mutas getting picked off as well, man. Just Aiden doing everything correct right now. He's keeping that pressure up, and at the same time, expanding back at home, now about to set another massive army with even more Widow Mines coming through onto the field. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> looking very more scarce. More Widow Mines and more. No. Right, what do I need? I want some more Widow Mines. Not, I mean, again, the turn player probably doesn't mind, and he's burrowing the Widow Mines. Look at that. As soon as he saw them, he's like, no way am I getting involved with that. Uh, he's going to send a few extra more links to get in there, but again, until they could detach, and that's that whole 1.5 second activation time for the Widow Mines. You might try to fly in there as quick as you possibly can, and now just throwing my Muta. This was poor decision making right now by our barcode Zerg player, but yeah, again, with the de deactivation, if the Marines are able to knock, and the Marauders are able to knock them down before they activate, I mean, those Widow Mines are still alive and very 
dangerous and now even more on the ground. This is just... Oh, look at that, man. Oh, look at Bobby! Oh, 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 every Zerg right now is just crying and calling David Kim right now, man. Oh, this is brutal. Oh, that was actually even painful for me to watch. Widow Mine's going against Bane's. And he drops those manor meals. Time for manor, guys. Manor up, John. You have just well, I mean, been blown up. The aren't necessarily useless. They can do some repairs. Indeed, yeah. Well, who, who, somebody tweeted that earlier. Doe Do is just like, yeah, I dropped manor meals on somebody, and eventually just... <laughs> I thought he was going to leave, but he didn't, so I just used them to repair, so I guess that was the other way. Exactly. Now sending in a massive more flank of even more ridiculous. How many bases does he currently have? One, well, two, he's got six total on the map. Yeah, he's got six total on the map. He's finishing up that one in the center, but it doesn't matter. I mean, more reinforcing units are coming out. There's some Widow Mines kind of lagging behind on the top end and a couple of Marines as well, but now the forward pressure coming at this new third once again. It, just nothing really that the Zerg player can do. He's down with so much supply. He's trying to bring out the Ultralis, but you just watch and see the Widow Mines are doing such wonderful work, taking out all the low, low HP and just light lanes, and yeah, there we go. GG coming out of our barcode player. Game number one going to Maryland College Park. The Terps. Them Terps. Oh, I hate Widow Mines. <laughs> <laughs> Love them, it's, man. It's, oh, I, feel, I feel sorry for anyone who has to go up against Widow Mines like that in a blanket strategy. Hey, hey, hey man. Really hey, man. Whenever I had to deal with Wings of Liberty late game, I, I was wondering, I'm like, I wonder if I had some kind of unit that wouldn't allow the Zerg just to swarm an A with me freely. Widow, and then and then David Kim woke up one day and he's like, Widow Mines, I have the answer. I'm like, yes, you are the man. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's take a quick commercial break, guys. Uh, uh, really quick, join us at Raid Call Group 11111. We're all chilling in the lounge right now, hanging out, having a wonderful time. Some of the players from the teams and captains as well. Um, some of our staff is there. Also, just got notified once we got 50 people in our lounge, we will do another giveaway. So get on that. Download Raid Call if you don't have it. Better get onto that and as well join. We'll be right back with game number two. Don't go anywhere.